Hi everyone. So let's continue our discussion on abusing trusts. Uh, now we will talk about abusing trusts at the database layer. So how are the trusts established between SQL servers at the database layer? That is done with the help of database links. A database link allows a SQL server to access external data sources like other SQL servers and OLEDB data sources like MS Access, Excel, Oracle, etc. In case of database links between servers, that is linked SQL servers, it is possible to execute stored procedures. Database links work across SQL server versions, across domain and even across forest trust. Uh, a database link is governed by the credentials or by the privileges uh, and by the privileges of those accounts which are used to establish a link. Whenever, data, whenever a database link is established, it can be established with the current credentials or you can explicitly provide some credentials. Uh, those credentials govern the privileges a user have on the target database. This means a user which is a public user on one of the databases may ultimately have sysadmin privileges on a linked databases if the database link was created uh, with the sysadmin privileges or a user with sysadmin privileges. So uh, how do we look for database links? Uh, with public privileges, if you run this query on any database, uh, on any SQL server, Right now we do have uh, sysadmin privileges on this uh, SQL server, but this one works for even for non-sysadmin privileges. So this database SQL SRV1 has a link to uh, Ops MS SQL and to Excel as server 2, to an Excel file, trying to access a file on a share. Uh, also this can be done uh, on scale the help of power of sql so if i run this so we have uh, this server has a link to ops ms sql and excel server 2 as was evident with that query which we ran now <clears throat> we can run various uh, stored procedures the the best way is to to query a database a linked database is to use open query so to discover database link chains we can run the same query to list uh, linked databases on a linked database that is in this case we saw here that ops equal srv1 the server where we uh, ran this script has a database link to ops ms sql that means <coughs> excuse me that means we can run something like this so what we are doing here we are running this query on the linked database ops ms sql let's run this so now this output is from ops ms sql ops ms sql has a link to ops file that is a link uh, link database link to another database visualize the chain we started with ops sql srv1 which is connected to ops ms sql which is connected to ops file so this way we can keep <coughs> discovering database links let's try to run this from ops file let's run this so now ops file is connected to dps sql srv2 now this dps sql srv2 lies in another forest how do i know uh, the naming convention convention suggests so secondly as i said earlier in a real uh, red team operations as soon as we got access to a domain user we would do trust enumeration and we, we will know this uh, from that right now we can simply assume this for the sake of for this walkthrough. So we started from ops SQL SRV1 connected to ops MS SQL connected to ops file uh, which is connected to DPS SQL SRV2. Now what uh, we would like to do uh, of course we can do this automatically with 
uh, power up which saves us from managing these single quotes you can see that the single quotes keep on uh, doubling the sequel the the single quote there is a one single quote then there is double single quote if you would like to embed another query inside it we need to uh, double the single quotes once again so for three or four nested queries the single quotes will literally go out of hand so in place of managing single quotes we may like to use uh, get SQL Server link crawl. Now let's see how it crawled the links. Started with op SQL SRV1, pass to server SQL SRV1, link login is op TC lab user, is this admin? Yes, we are this admin on SQL SRV1 right now. There is another link, Excel SR Server 2, which was an Excel sheet, and uh, that, that link was broken. Now on ops MS SQL, and the link is op SQL SRV1 to ops MS SQL. Link login is SA. That means whatever we run on ops MS SQL will run with sysadmin privileges. Now from there, uh, from op SQL SRV1 to ops MS SQL to ops file, we, the link is file DB admin, but we do not have uh, any sysadmin privileges there. Now from there, op SQL SRV1 to MS SQL to ops file to DPS SQL SRV2, we do have sysadmin privileges. So this way we started from a server where although we had, excuse me, although we had uh, the uh, sysadmin privileges, but as we can see here in this link, even if we do not have sysadmin privileges, we can uh, get uh, we, we can we get the privileges of the link the privileges with which the link was created for example we had sysadmin privileges here we had sysadmin privileges here we do not have sysadmin privileges here but we do have sysadmin privileges here on dps sql srv2 which is a sql server 2016 path was from sql srv1 to ms sql to ops file to this uh, DPS SQL SRV2 server. Now, what we can do once we have sysadmin privileges on a box? Now, having direct sysadmin privileges is a bit different than going through a SQL server link or a database link. For example, we cannot enable XPCMD shell unless RPC out is enabled for all the links. What is RPC out? I think it should. Is it listed here? No. So if you see this is the RPC out property. If it is set to true, in that case we can enable XPCMD shell. Otherwise we need to enable it. Does that mean that we would need <coughs> RPC out for uh, command execution? Maybe, maybe not. We may try to use all other command execution options we have seen and one of them may uh, click there or may, may uh, allow us to run commands. But if RPC out is enabled for all links, which is disabled by default, XPCMD shell can be enabled using this simple command. So when we use execute this to enable XPCMD shell and use add parameter, the command traverses the link and executes it on the target box. Now, if we would like to execute a command using CMD shell onto the target box, it can be done using this. So, let's uh, try this opens up a calculator onto the target box but let's try let's assume that we can connect back to an attacker's machine from the target box so that machine could be any machine hosted on the internet or something similar 
So what we are going to do, we are going to download and execute a PowerShell payload in memory on this box. So PowerShell IEX new object net dot web client dot download string. Uh, we need to escape these single quotes and the script we would like to download and execute. Now let's see at what level of nesting we are here. There are four single quotes here. So we need to double the single quotes. Eight single quotes here. Let's remove this. Eight single quotes here and eight single quotes here. Let's run this. This gets executed on the target box. We get a connect back from uh, 3.2 here you go so what are our privileges we are running as a most probably either at least a domain user could be a local administrator in a trusted forest so we have just crossed forest level limitations those of you who deal with forest all those uh, SID filtering and all those sort of uh, so forest is considered a security boundary by Microsoft and we just traversed through that security boundary. That doesn't mean that if there was no forest trust, we could have still done the same. No, because there was a bi-directional trust uh, between offensive PS and defensive PS for PS forests. Only because of that we could do this, but still this flies way below the detection radar. So we are on the PS Eclipse Survey 2 and uh, it, uh, we, we are now free to let's say gather information about the target forest and look for user hunting or privilege escalation opportunities and whatever we would like to do we can do that it from this shell so uh, that is all about abusing uh, trusts at the database layer using database links So, uh, also uh, we can uh, not only command execution, we can also extract at least, at the very least, if, even if we cannot uh, extra, uh, execute commands on the database uh, there, we can at least access uh, the, the data stored on that particular database. Uh, which uh, is all, uh, actually in, in most cases that is the absolute or the final target of any red team operation to get access to some interesting piece of information. Uh, of course you can decrypt database link server passwords as well. You may like to refer to this blog post for that. I'm not going to cover it. So hands on aid is to get a reverse shell on DPS SQL SRV2 by abusing database links. So uh, that would be all about uh, later movement. In the next video, we'll talk about persistence. Once uh, we have, so we once again, we started from the discovery of SQL servers, uh, then um, got access using brute force, both using credentials and with our domain access, escalated our, did our privileges, executed command, moved literally to <clears throat> not only to other boxes, but to other forests as well. Now is the right time to look for persistence opportunities. That is covered in the next video.